Really, Instagram should pay me, but I cannot bite the hand that feeds us. In reality, Instagram has given us more money and time than the amount of money and time that we've invested into the platform. Instagram alone scaled merch from a five-figure business to a six-figure business in only the course of six months. Our focus on curating and building our social media presence directly impacted the speed that our business and our revenue grew. This was due to two reasons, the ability to save time and also build trust. Our Instagram built trust because of our continuously engaged audience and our content that we always displayed. So whenever a client potentially wanted to work with us, they would go to our Instagram profiles and see what kind of work they could expect. Instagram saved us time because our potential clients could read through our posts and understand the power of social media as well as strong content marketing. Clients understood what we did well and specialized in before we even started the conversation. That is what brand is. It is the ability to build trust and save time and automate systems because people know who you are and trust you. Some great examples are Apple and Rolls Royce. They barely have to spend any money on marketing because people already know who they are and trust their products. Even if you're not a business, but you're interested in how to use social media and Instagram, make sure you watch this video as all of these strategies can help you in whatever that you're doing. If you're already here, I'm going to assume that you already understand the power of social media and Instagram on the marketplace. And also how so many businesses are already utilizing these social media platforms to amplify everything that they're doing. So instead of droning on and on, I'm gonna dive straight into the methods of how you can use social media to your advantage. The first method is to optimize your bio. Your bio is the first thing that potential clients and customers see when they visit your Instagram profile. Therefore, it is the first thing you should focus on when rebranding your Instagram profile. In a couple sentences, you want to explain what you actually do. Make sure you do it concisely and purposefully. Talk about what you do and who you do it for. Besides your content, your bio is the statement that explains to people why they should follow you and your business. Think about why your profile is worth someone's time and attention. In your bio, always have a call to action. Instagram is amazing to build, but remember, it's supposed to be used as a tool to drive people away to build your business and your real network. For example, some people like to offer a free ebook in exchange for someone's email. Or similar to us, you can drive your Instagram audience away to another social media platform. For us, we like to drive people towards our YouTube, where we can give longer form value if you're interested. We love making these free videos, and we want more and more people to see how to use social media to their advantage. So if you could click that thumbs up button below, that would really help this video do well in the YouTube algorithm. Make sure that wherever you're sending your audience that it's optimized for your phone because most of Instagram happens on these mobile devices. Just test out your website or landing page first from your own device. In the address section, you also wanna make sure that you tag your location so that anybody searching in your area can find your content and find your profile. The second method is to have a brand plan. Consistency and clarity. When I talk about consistency, I'm talking about being active on the platform. In the past, that used to mean posting every single day on your feed. However, that's not as important as it used to be. A way to continuously communicate with your audience is to use engaging stories, as well as direct messages to continue the conversation. A lot of people call clarity your niche. You want someone who's never seen your profile before to see your profile, read your bio, and go through all of your content as well as watch your story highlights and see what exactly it is that you and your business do and who you do it for. If you're able to have them understand what you do after a session on your profile, they're more likely to understand why they would press the blue follow button. They have to understand why they're there and why they would continuously come back in the future. In the past, money was a key form of currency, but now as more and more people are understanding efficiency, time, it's just as important as money, if not more important. Someone's time and attention is something that you have to value. And as a business, you have to create content that would make those people say, yes, I will give you my attention. And yes, I will give you my time. If you're a business or personal brand and want to learn more about content marketing and social media, make sure you're subscribed below for videos every single Friday. Jess has been extremely busy with her projects, but soon we'll create more videos about the content creation process. Method number three is having a plan for your feed and your stories. As a business, there's different strategies that you can implement to really enhance your feed as well as your stories. Your feed should serve as a foundation, a portfolio of what exactly it is that you do. Make sure that every single piece of content that you have in your feed is well curated, that it's professional, and that it really shows and explains what exactly that you do. This is where you save time when it comes to using social media and Instagram. You have to be able to use your Instagram profile as a means to educate and inform people exactly what it is that your business does. If a potential client or customer reads or watches your content and understands exactly what you do, you have already saved time because they're educated in your business. That way, when you actually begin or continue a conversation with them, you guys are both on the same playing field. If you've watched our videos in the past, you know I like to use the analogy of building a house. 
Your grid or your professional content is what serves as the foundation of your business on Instagram. Just like building a house, it's not something that you need to renovate every single day. You don't really need to add to it unless it adds value to your audience. On our profile, I think we do an amazing job when it comes to showing how we brand and also the kind of photo content and lifestyle shots that we can take. However, that's just a small percentage of our business. A large percentage of Merge, as well as what we do when it comes to content marketing, is video production, as well as utilizing that content and distributing it towards that business's goals. Some goals could include building your audience, increasing your sales, streams, app downloads, whatever it is. I think we do a good job of explaining that in our captions, but not everybody consumes content the same way. Just like how you learn people sometimes read, they prefer to watch, they prefer to listen. However it is that your audience consumes, you have to create content for each kind of category. So using our own profiles as an example, I think we need to post more video content that we've done for clients, as well as more spoken word videos like this, explaining the backend work that we do when it comes to content marketing and leveraging our content for social media. For stories, these serve as more of a maintenance for you to speak directly to your audience. Find ways to engage them, ask them questions. It's the most efficient way to get customer feedback. Your clients and your customers are the key to your business. You always have to make sure that you understand and you listen exactly to what it is that they need, what kind of value they need from your business. Your stories are also a place where you do not need to spend so much time in curating your content. In a way, the informality of your stories allows you to build trust with your audience. And that contrast between the professional feel of your grid, as well as the more intimate setting of your stories combined creates a contrast that is appealing to many people in the current marketplace. Method number four is to use hashtags. Using hashtags was a strategy that was always recommended in the past by people in the social media space. As more and more people saturated Instagram, more and more people used hashtags and it was harder to be organically discovered. But just like any economic supply and demand, people aren't using hashtags as much because they weren't seeing results in the past. Hashtags, again, are great for getting organic impressions for your posts as long as your content is really professional and gives value to your audience. What we like to recommend is to create a list of three sets of hashtags between 20 and 30 hashtags. What you have to do is actually a little bit of hashtag research in your space and understand what kind of hashtags people search to be able to find your business. I'm gonna show you a screen recording on my phone and we're gonna go over, let's say you are a a painter, that is your business. What kind of hashtags that you would add to your content so that people who needed a painter would be able to contact you and see your work? So I'm gonna show my screen recording right here. And let's see. So we're gonna first go to tags. And if I search painter, you'll see that when people think of painters, right? They think of someone who uses paint as an art medium, not so much the business of painting a home or painting a piece of commercial real estate. So we're gonna to have to work backwards and see what kind of hashtags that painters in the commercial space would use. This also brings up a good point. You don't always want to choose hashtags that have a lot of competition. It's a lot harder to be discovered organically if you're competing against profiles that have massive amounts of engagement and followers. The smaller your audience is, the more niche you want your hashtags to be. All right, so let's say you search for commercial painting, okay? So once you find that first hashtag that has to do with your business, you can go to this thing called related, where you can see other hashtags that have similarities um, to the hashtag that you picked. So this helps you automate your list a little bit and helps you find the other hashtags that'll help get you organic impressions. So if you see here related, there's painting contractor, residential painting, exterior painting, painting company, house painter, interior painting, et cetera, et cetera. So we click on one of these, you can kind of see what kind of competition you're playing with. This person who is at the top of, their, top of the list has 175 likes and has only a thousand followers. If you think your profile can get around this engagement, make sure you use one of these hashtags to get ranked as some of the top of the searches. This is a great way for people to organically find you and your business. But I also wanna flip it around a little bit and do a little bit of outbound work instead of just waiting for people to come and see your content. So using the example of a commercial painter again, let's pretend that we wanna reach out to general contractors to be able to pitch them on why we should be their subcontractor and paint all of their properties. So if I was a painting company, I would search for the hashtag, let's say, um, general contractor. So scrolling down here, let's pick this one, Justin Doyle Homes. Okay, so Justin Doyle Homes, he seems to have the best custom home in Ohio 2018, and he basically builds 
custom houses from architectural plans from how it seems. So this person would be a great candidate to reach out to if you were a painter because you could potentially paint all of his custom homes. So just like any other direct messaging tool or strategy that we've used in our past videos, you wanna send him a message. Always put that emoji in the front to get his attention. So I would say, on your custom homes. And then you also wanna use like uh, specific things about what they do. So best custom home in Ohio, 2018. So we can also mention that. Then you wanna explain a little bit about what it is that you do. And would love the opportunity to be able to work on your homes. Cheers, James, okay? Then you're gonna send that message. At the beginning of our business, when we had a strong foundation of content, a lot of our work was actually reaching out to companies outbound and finding companies that would wanna work with us in our photo content. If you're just starting out your business or new to the entrepreneurial space and have more time than you have money, definitely leverage Instagram and find ways to reach out to companies that would potentially wanna work with you. Method number five is to use influencer marketing. In the last year, the global influencer marketing budget has tripled in only one year's time. Brands still have a lot to gain when using influencer marketing correctly. The biggest mistake is when companies or brands solely look at the number of following that an influencer has. There's a lot of other variables that a business has to incorporate and think about when using influencer marketing. At Merge, we've been able to work with both sides. On the business side, we've worked with clients and helped run successful influencer marketing campaigns. And then on the influencer marketing side, we've worked with creators to help grow their accounts, as well as be more of a manager when it comes to steering their brand vision and revenue. Again, do not only look at the size of the influencer themselves, even though it is an important statistic to consider. As an example, let's use Young Box Boys insights and analytics. Make sure you always take a look at how many story views they get. Make sure you look at how much engagement they get per post. If you're running stories with them, ask them about previous amount of swipe ups they've got on similar campaigns or how many sticker taps they've got from a similar kind of story. This will kind of give you an understanding and a baseline of what you can expect by running a campaign with an influencer in your niche. After looking more at the numbers, you really want to pay attention to their demographics. Where is their audience coming from? If you're a business selling products across the United States, you wanna find someone like Box Boy, who has a majority of his audience based in the United States. If you're a brand selling products inside the United States, you wouldn't wanna work with large influencers that have a majority of their demographics somewhere else. You want to make sure that the influencer's engagement as well as demographic aligns with your businesses. The small adjustment to what I just said would be if you were a brand based in a certain country, but wanted to start a campaign to grow your audience in another country. Method number six is giveaways. A lot of businesses immediately run to Facebook or Google because that's what they've heard and spend massive amounts of money with the sole purpose of trying to convert sales. For those that do not have a large experience in digital marketing, they might spend $100 to sell a $50 hoodie. Instead of spending that $100 to sell a $50 hoodie, you can also give away two hoodies worth $50 each, $100, to two members of your audience. This allows you to hit two birds with one stone. Instead of spending your money on a different kind of advertisement platform, you can spend your money on your potential audience, your future audience. For a basic giveaway, I'd recommend a couple rules. The first is for the person entering the giveaway to tag three friends. You've all heard of this butterfly effect or the snowball effect, where one equals two and then two, four, et cetera, et cetera. So if one person tags three, you're expecting those, that those three people will tag a total of nine people. This all builds and adds momentum. Also, the people entering your giveaway are doing a lot of the legwork because most of the people that they're tagging are also interested in that certain kind of business. For example, I wouldn't tag my mom in a sneaker giveaway even though she's quite the hype beast. The second rule, which is kind of obvious, is for them to follow your account. Even though you're giving away products or services and trying to build your community, you also want to build your Instagram following at the same time. The goal here is building a community and you're doing it in a fun way. Instead of spending $100 and building a relationship with Facebook or Google, you're able to spend that $100 and create a fun giveaway with your audience. Method number seven is test, analyze, and repeat. With social media, unless you have a team doing it, you will always be a little bit behind. And as a business leader, you don't have a lot of time. So make your decisions and your ideas quickly. Do not spend too much time debating ideas. Trust your instincts, learn a little bit, and then execute immediately. If you wait too long to try to perfect your concept or idea, by the time that you finally come to your decision, Instagram or whatever social media platform will have already changed its algorithm. Before you start your campaigns, understand what ideal expectational results you want to achieve. 
Then after it's done, look at what happened and why it worked or did not work. Analyze those things and then reiterate and repeat over and over and over again. Figure out what works and then spend more time and money towards those campaigns. As business leaders, some of us spend too much time on decisions that we have no idea how they would turn out. Use these strategies laid out above, create your campaigns and do. Test, analyze, and repeat. And Jess and I find a lot of joy when it comes to working with businesses on their social media. So if you have campaigns and you test them out, we'd love to hear about them and figure out ways that we can make them better. Our aim is to really help everyone understand the power of social media. Even though these platforms can be fun and all, you really can use and leverage these platforms as a weapon in your business toolbox. These platforms are really different forms of digital real estate. The sooner you invest your time and your money into them, the sooner you can amplify and excel your business. As always, if you have any other questions, please make sure to comment them below as we answer every single one on our YouTube or send us a direct message on Instagram.